up, man? It's your boy Supreme. Y'all here. Staying down in New York. Beautiful weather. We out here shooting around in this lovely New York day. I got an album out that was then. This is now. Make sure y'all check that out everywhere. Follow me on Instagram at Shaolin.Lore. You already know what it is. I don't play ball. Get to these bars. Get to these bars. Like you already know. It's Father Shaw. Summertime 96 now available on SoundCloud. I was about six or seven when my older brother introduced me to, of course, Wu Tang. It was into the Wu 36 Chambers. That was kind of my first experience with hip hop. Can you guys discuss, you know, the first time you experienced hip hop and what were you listening to? Who put you on? The first time I experienced hip hop, it had to be as a baby walking around the crib. I killed 225 with a bottle just listening to whatever my mother was playing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm talking the Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. That album, classic obviously, but that's like, you know, just the sonic vibe of that. When I hear it now as an adult, I get a certain feeling in my chest. It's like warm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I could process the lyrics and everything like that now, but that shit resonated with me as a youth, you know what I'm saying? So that's probably my first, like, experience with hip-hop. First experience with hip-hop? Um, I had to be in Florida at this time. I was living in Florida for seven years before I moved out here, but it was around that time when my pops was making um, Supreme Clientele, just that whole that whole visual of watching that project come together. That was my experience. That's when I first started writing my own bars, shit like that, just walking around the crib, wearing the sun guard chain. But that was that was my first experience of hip hop, falling in love with hip hop right there. My first experience with hip hop, like since I was a shorty, my pops used to take me everywhere to studio, wherever. And I used to hear just all these types of beats. And the earliest I can remember is when he was working on Jacal 2000, Judgment Day. And I was just hearing the raw cuts and you notes, know, like beats and rough drafts and everything. And I really liked, like, hip hop was my shit. Like, I, like, anything that wasn't hip hop, I didn't like none of that R&B shit, none of that. If it had something to do with singing, if it didn't have that I wasn't trying to hear it, man. If I, if I go to your phone and I put your playlist and shuffle, what am I going to hear? Oh, you're going to hear some Kendrick Lamar, some Scooby Q, some Joey Badass, some Absol, some Logic. Uh, uh, you might even hear a little pussy. I'm not even gonna say hey, a lot of y'all. You might hear Playboy Cardi too. I don't discriminate. Like they music bump, but I, I really love these bars. Love these bars. That's it. Intel. That's it. Intel. <laughs> <laughs> that was then. This is now. That's it. Good. You definitely gonna hear a bunch of Kendrick and all that. But I'm an old school nigga. You gonna hear some Curtis Mayfield and my shit, some Bloodstone. Now, now I got a front. I bump, I bump. You know I mean? Like, when it come to old school shit, now I see her Jones. That's it. Sean Carter. That's it. Right now, I, you know, your, especially your generation and the generation after you guys, you guys are going to be defined by the Donald Trump era. How do you think, um, what are your thoughts on just like presidency right now and like social issues? He's not my president. That's all I'm saying. Man. Fuck them niggas, man. I honestly don't really care about none of that. If he was born fucked up, he was born fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Jesus ain't never hang with the, the good people. They hung with the slums anyway, just so they could see how he was behaving and ask questions on why he was doing the same thing he was doing. So, like I said before, to each his own, man. He just, some people are just born wicked. And when you're fully grown, there's nothing you can say to them people. He's one of them people, so it's like, born with them. It's just, it's just a matter of as we as a people, like, cause there ain't no telling what this dude can do at any given time, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's up to us as a people just to come together, you know, so we can be stronger and, you know, actually get this country back to where it needs to be and put the right one in office and not a celebrity. Kanye West for president in 2020. Nah, he done Didn't lost you just say not a celebrity though? Kanye done lost his <laughs> beat. I trust the music. I'm not, I don't want him with the button. You want Kanye West with the button? Yeah, why not? Because as soon as somebody says Korea something you like, it's won't over. give me my shoe deal over there. Give <laughs> Kanye the button. Michelle Obama 2020, nigga. Facts. Facts. Huh? All day. Huh? Like, all day. Three words, Black uh -huh. Lives Matter, uh -huh. and one name, Kate Prince. Okay. Uh, I stand with him. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I'm not really in the football like that, but 
I'm definitely not really paying attention to it now after that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely with Kaepernick. Uh, Black Lives Matter, man. I, I don't really like that movement, to be honest with you. I feel like when you say that, you, you've already accepted that we're lower than anybody else. We've been up here, so Black Lives Matter, that, that it's not really in my vocabulary. Um, Kaepernick, I fuck with him, you know what I'm saying? He's one of the people that's standing up for what we need to stand up for, man. Everybody got to see that, so thumbs up, baby. Black Lives Matter, they're absent for a minute, but uh, I don't really support that group. It's like, uh, they, don't really, they don't really show their face no more. When shit was bad, they was all over the place, whatever, whatever. But now, it's like, where y'all from? Like, but as far as Colin Kaepernick, they need to give my man's a job, because I don't know if y'all watch football out there, but Jay Cutler is trash. And Colin Kaepernick, he's nice, and he's don't, he's one of the, he's one of the few athletes that's actually standing up for the community out there. Real bars matter. And it's bad that the NFL is not is not backing him on this, because the NFL they just see us as dollar signs. They don't care about political views or nothing like that. And it's, it's foul that he's getting treated the way he does for taking the knee. You got dudes in the league right now that beat up their girlfriend, all types of shit. That's, that's still out there playing ball, making millions, and he at home. Because he took a knee for our people. And that shit is fucked up, man. Right? Like, uh, like, I'm a big, in a, I'm a big uh, football fan and shit. I used to play football coming up. Me and this group, but I don't support the NFL as of 2017. I haven't watched the game yet, and I don't plan to at all. Like, until they start, like, really, you know, they need to, they need to start doing for the, more for the community. They need to be like the NBA. Because the NBA support their players. That's just safe. That's a fact. Get y'all shit together with y'all views and then make this shit safe for you. I want to ask with the NBA season coming up, who are you guys doing for? Golden <laughs> State! Golden State, bro. You already know, and I ain't no front runner neither, nigga. I know Barry Davis. Okay, I've been a fan since 07, boy. Okay, I remember when Curry got drafted. I remember when Clay got drafted. Draymond, y'all wasn't looking at my mans like they was nice. Okay? And now they nice, y'all wanna hop on the wave. We getting these rings. We getting these rings. These rings. Don't let him lie to y'all, man. Don't let him lie to y'all. Bunch of bandwagon. And the Knicks suck. Really? <laughs> The Nets suck. All New York sports teams, they suck. The Giants no, suck. Him. The Giants suck. Eli Manning. Eli Manning sucks. Giants suck. Don't. Jets suck. The Yankees Giants suck. Mets suck, is nice. Mets? I, I don't give a fuck about the hockey, Mets? so the Islanders and Rangers. The Mets? You said the Mets? You don't even watch half the teams you just said. Hey, you can't even spell baseball, nigga. B-A-S-E-B-A-L. Blake Symphony, the B and by MBJ. Oh, my man Sha. We're about to do the first two or three. Now, you see, I don't got the basketball shoes on, and he got the jazz. So. Hey, listen, I'm just saying. I'm a little old, I got track shoes on, so let's go. First two or three. Legends, legends, like 
Mind you. So. Put a stamp on it. You can't tarnish their legacy, none of that. The Wu Tang will live forever in pop culture, period. Like, it's just, it's just like, I feel like people, their expectations going in to, I feel like I'm speaking for myself right now, going in, they feel like I'm supposed to be up here automatically. Like, I'm supposed to be on my father's level, if not better. Yeah, I'll speak for myself in this situation or this aspect right here only because like you'll see um you'll see him with his pops, like you'll see I mean I don't really speak to my pops like that, so for me just like rapping then this is just all I really know. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't I don't think to to say oh I don't even attach myself with his name as much that much. Like I've been in college for four years now and last week was the first person that asked me who my pops was. Like for real. Like I, I don't speak about his name at, at all. So like that's just how I, I learned to maneuver and learn how to um I'm more focused on like just building my own like hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. So I'm like, I don't want to tell nobody that. If they find out, they find out. I can't deny it. That's my pops. Bro. Yeah, you don't so, want to live in shadows their whole life. He don't want to be known as just his ghost face son. Like, he, they don't want to be known as just his you guys son. I don't want to be known as just his better man son. We all individuals. We all our own man. Like, you feel me? That should trip me the fuck out. Because yeah, Bronson... Not to cut you off, but she next up. Alright. Uh, Bronson is like... When I first heard him, I was like, damn, this new Ghost record is hot. And it's like, <laughs> was like I was like, shit, it's like, that's not Ghost, that's Action Bronson. I'm like, all right, so who is this black dude really out here faking the funk? And then I peep, I'm like, yo, this is not the, this is not Sun. Like, this is that not shit, son. that's really crazy. Yeah, like, but Bron like, Bronson, he be killing that shit, though. That song you got with your pops was tough, too. They got a track together. They got a track together? You know? Yeah. What does it sound like? That's mad funny. It's how it's done. 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 It's how it's then you must really, really listen to that or listen to that type of music or really like that type of music. So I don't really think, like I said, I don't know personally, I hope he's not biting, but you know what I'm saying? I just feel like that's respect. I mean, just coming up, listening to things like that, being able to feel like that. Ghostface for the longest time, because of the way it is written shit, that it's not, but I'm like, yo, it don't matter, that shit is hilarious. Only thing is, I don't like how he be digging into J. Cole, because J. Cole would be nice, you know what I'm saying? But, the reviews he be giving, hilarious. I used to look forward to. We still doing? Um, I see him pop up, but it's not like it used to be. I used to look forward to him, especially when he had to say about Kendrick.